EA sent me an early copy of Immortals of Avium, and I put some time into it so I can show you guys how the magic-based combat system works. Turns out it's pretty much the first-person Doctor Strange game we never got. If you just blur your eyes a little bit, a little bit more, see? Before getting into the primary magic types, I want to get into these on the left, which are your three control spells. Limpets will fire these green globby things that will slow down anyone they stick to. This is great for crowd control or flanking around certain enemies like these guys who were born with a very obvious weak spot on their back. Limpet charges can also be ignited with red magic attacks, which will make them fester up and detonate into a little AoE. In the skill tree, if you max out Limpets, its lasting duration will extend and each glob will also apply Decay. Decay is like a poison that inflicts damage over time. Limpet's effect can also apply to certain objects, slowing them down, usually used on traps, doors, and moving platforms. Puzzle stuff. Then you have Disrupt, which shoots out a red beam inflicting a small knockback. This is primarily used to neutralize magic casters, though. When you see an enemy health bar outlined in yellow like this here, they're casting a spell, and Disrupt can cancel that charge. One of the effects you can unlock in the skill tree for Disrupt will cause it to apply the Corrosion debuff, increasing subsequent red magic attacks on the target. Then there's Lash, which will pull smaller enemies right into hugging range. This pairs well with close range magic types like red or green, or just a quick nux. One of the upgrades for Lash creates a damaging knockback when the tether connects. If it's a somewhat larger enemy, instead you'll pull yourself over to it. Combat isn't the only use for Lash, and it's also a useful traversal tool after you gain the Grapple Augment. Hey, I know how it is, and sometimes you might just throw total garbage foods into your face hole to quickly get back to what you're doing. But today's sponsor, Factor, sends you fully prepared meals that are just as fast if not faster, and are much healthier for you. Factor ships fresh meals directly to your door, so you don't need to leave your home... ever. And they're ready to consume after a quick heat up. These meals are never frozen, which means they taste better and are better for you, since they don't have tons of junk blasted in to make them apocalypse proof. Factor has a different rotating selection of meals every week, with over 34 options to pick from each time. There's protein-focused meals, keto-friendly, vegan, veggie, calorie-smart, and even desserts, shakes, and smoothies. Or you can just pick the chef's choice. Head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code BOOMSTICKGAMING50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Again, easy healthy meals without leaving your house. Go to Factor75.com or use the link below to get 50% off your first box by using code BOOMSTICKGAMING50. Thanks to Factor, and now, back to me. Now the strikes in your right hand, or simply put, spell guns. Your green magic strikes are the rapid fire focus of the bunch, best suited for mid to close range. The three variants that green strikes come in are Storm Shard, Maelstrom, and Seeker Storm Shard. Storm Shard fires fairly quickly but with limited accuracy, so you're gonna have to get pretty close with this one. Maelstrom shoots drastically faster than that with a narrower spread, and generally has a larger magazine, or whatever you load into your hand. The downside of Maelstrom is that it greatly lowers your movement speed while firing. It's good to pair this with your mid-air hover ability though, since that completely negates that movement penalty like you would have on the ground. By the way, holding out your shield also reduces your movement speed in a similar way, but again, hover can rectify that. So a solid combo with Maelstrom is to constantly hover while unloading your green juice with your shield raised. In the green magic skill tree, there's also an ability that lets you gain health back whenever that shield takes damage. The last green variant, Seeker Storm Shard, is going to fire slower, larger projectiles, but these will automatically home into nearby targets. If raw aim skill isn't your thing, or you just want easier targeting, Seeker Storm Shard is a solid all-around option. Now your red magic strikes, which will be either short-range shotgun-like blasts or an explosive grenade type effect depending on the variant you're using. You'll find red strikes that come in breach fire, frag fire, and burst fire. Breach fire will launch out a short-range circular blast that cones inward to its center point. 
frag fire is very similar but with a much larger blast radius. Downside is you'll need to reload it more often. And burst fire sends out a small volatile projectile that damages anything in an area of effect around it. That was a really weird way to explain explosion. There's going to be different stats and modifiers for each of these strikes you get, most noticeably here with Burst Fire. Depending on which one you're using can change the range in which the explosive can travel. By the way, in the Red Magic skill tree, there's a really useful unlock that lets you punch to destroy most all shields. And the last strike type is Blue Magic based, being your most precise option if you shoot it right. Blue Strike variants come in Strike Bolt, Arc Light, and Javelin. Strike Bolt shoots quick, accurate shots, but the faster you smash that fire button, the less accurate. Arc Light is going to shoot larger, more powerful bolts, but with less total charges before you need to reload that hand. With this, you can really see the downside to spamming the button too fast, and instead try to pace them out until your crosshair realigns to the center. Javelin is going to do these little blasts if you tap the button, but if you hold it, it'll zoom in and charge up its sniper shot. A lot of useful stuff in the blue magic skill tree, but this ability lets you run at full speed with your shield raised. It's pretty good. Over here on the right side of the screen, you're going to see your six fury abilities. These are going to be your most traditional style of spells that function off of a limited mana resource. You'll automatically regain that first bar of mana over time, but consuming a mana crystal is the most reliable way to top that off. And over here on the far right is your Dominion Charge, which powers your Immolate spell. This is pretty much your ultimate ability, which is a button you press when you need things to die. There's a lot more to this, but that's essentially the basics of what to expect from the gameplay side of things. Thanks for checking this out today, thanks to Factor for sponsoring a section, and thanks to EA for supplying the video game. I'm Alex, and I'll see you next time.